Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. Uh, we will uh, start with the economic releases for today. Uh, at 8.15, we had the ADP non-farm employment change, uh, and the private sector employment increased uh, by 749,000 jobs from August to September. Uh, this is good news for the market. We're seeing the market rebound right now uh, into the highs. We also have the Chicago PMIs, which came in positive. Uh, we also had at 830, we had the final GDP. So uh, real gross domestic uh, product decreased at an annual rate of 31.4% in the second quarter of 2020, which is normal taking into consideration the pandemic. Uh, we also have pending home sales. These are coming at 10 a.m. Eastern. They're going to have a moderate impact on the market. Uh, at 10.30, as usually at every, th uh, every Wednesday, we have crude oil inventories. And at 11 o'clock, we have an FOMC member that will be delivering a speech. And this is also about COVID-19 and the economy. And of course, this is going to be a webinar of virtual forum that is going to be hosted by the Wisconsin Manufacturing uh, Manufacturers and Commerce. Uh, this is going to be all for the day today. So we don't have one, any other high impact releases for the day. And I was browsing some news that uh, actually came out, uh, some about Tesla, some about you know, some stocks that I was looking at, um, uh, upgrades and downgrades to see how uh, this is going to impact um, the price action for today in the uh, futures indices. All right, so let's begin with our analysis. First off, an overlook at uh, what is leading and what is lagging in today's session. We have a pretty nice balance uh, today of rebound off of the lows from the overnight trading session, and we're seeing the prices uh, trying to cross into the green. Uh, thus, we have the Dow mildly negative with 23 points down, 0.09% insignificant. We're back to where we almost to where we closed uh, yesterday in the New York trading session. The S&P uh, is actually down only one point. It was green just moments ago with 0.02% to the downside. We're having NASDAQ 13 points down, 0.12%. Basically, we're still trading right now. The price action at this moment is trading within the range of NASDAQ that we've had the whole entire New York trading session. And uh, we have Russell which is down only 2.2.3, 2 and it is down 0.15%. It's again trading within yesterday's range, and we have a nice double bottom formation in Russell, which uh, suggests a little bit more strength uh, accumulation into the 1490 zone. Um, we are going to move into our analysis, but not before we take a close look at gold. Uh, gold has been uh, nice and steady off of the support zone into the 1850. Nice rebound over the 1880 area, which uh, represented in yesterday's trading session the break above a quite massive range that we had from last week's trading. And right now the price is balancing off and is doing a bull flag formation. You can see it right here. So this is the breakout point. We went higher. And then we came back. Uh, we came back down to retest a support zone, a minor support zone, actually. And the price had a really nice spike when the numbers came out, and we had a punch into the 1906.6. Anything that trades above this resistance may create more velocity for price advancement into the 1940 spot, where we also have a confluence level. We also have, you can see here. We have the 200 SMA. We also have prior price action. This, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to become a, a take profit spot, partial profit spot for us. And we have oil that continues to be very much sideways. It continues to trade within the weekly trigger. So nothing has violated in that respect. Weekly low from two weeks ago, still standing, still holding, and we're still trading within those parameters. Just a very sloppy range at this point. All right, so with that being said, I am going to take the screen back and uh, I am going to display 
our charts for further analysis. Just let me get this ready here. And we are off to our analysis and we have about 10 minutes to go into the open of the session. All right, so we have uh, marked a low for temporary low uh, at 2 a.m. So we had a pretty solid sell for about four hours, starting with 10 o'clock last night. So we had one, two, three, four. Uh, the sell occurred not before tapping into the prior high. So we can say that we have a triple top formation here. Uh, we were going to pretty much form a descending pattern into the Dow, but yesterday's pop into this high right at 10 o'clock, almost into the 27,600, uh, created this bullish effect. So in this respect right now, we still have a high and we still have a mild lower high. And so far we're having the price that is trading into the upper direction. So what that means is that we may actually see a progression, a further progression to the upside. We had a very nice rebound into three o'clock, two to three o'clock, two o'clock, the European markets open. And then at three o'clock, London session open that kickstart this rotation. And it was also based on a confluence level. We, had, we are in the vicinity of 27,000, which is really a massive support zone. We have seen multiple uh, bounces off of this level and this time was no different. In fact, we did have, uh, find, uh, uh, we did find support and we did bounce actually a little bit higher than that 27 cluster. And we had a very nice rotation continuation. You can see here that we remain sideways into six o'clock. At six o'clock, we saw a little bit more of gyration. And this was due to the fact that, uh, you know, there were a lot of positions that were open and a lot of positions that were closed ahead of the numbers that were coming in at eight o'clock, eight o'clock to 8.30. And then we had the live pause into seven o'clock right before the numbers came out. We have the 200 simple moving average that held the price and propelled the price higher. And we had a very nice transition in, back into the first resistance spot. You can see that I have already displayed the bullish above zone. So this was the bullish above before the numbers came out. Uh, and we have accomplished basically the target zone from the uh, pre-market uh, from the pre-market really close to uh, really close to the New York trading session open, we have fulfilled the target already. So now uh, having two uh, hours, actually one and a half hours to the upside, we need to see how the price is going to calibrate in this spot because here's what I'm seeing in the charts. If we are, if we manage to stabilize and break above 400, we will have a transition higher for about 50 points. Then we're gonna have a stall moment again. We have an area of resistance from which if digested, we could pop back to 600. 600 to 650, this is gonna be another spot right here. This is going to assure an easier transition into the 663. This resistance with the high velocity area is also coming from an area that is much awaited into the Dow being a weekly rotation. Anything that trades above 663 will have a higher velocity. So from 650 to about 750, that's going to be an easy 100 point gain into the spot. We mentioned yesterday that this is going to be the easy trading that is going to be here. But nonetheless, we're going to be looking to fill out this void, but it's not going to be as fluid. We're not going to have that uh, fluency in price that we are going to see if the price is going to achieve these spots right here. All right, let's uh, move on to the m and &E SMP. The m and &E SMP has pretty similar structure. There's one thing uh, into, uh, into a higher odds into the m and &E SMP is that uh, we're already trading in the high velocity zone above. And this is, uh, this is the area that also coincides with a weekly rotation. So we're trading into that bullish momentum into the m and &E SMP. Gold is rebounding. So we're seeing not relatively nice price action today. Uh, and we're holding the lows from yesterday's trading session where we had that flash crash into the 3841 support zone. And we're seeing a nice rebound 
happy go happy oil and happy the uh, happy m and &E and i'm noticing also that financials are a little bit stronger which may create more power to the m and &E and for further rally now we're stuck into this uh, pivot right here into the 36. We also have prior price action dynamics that is stalling the price at this point into the 36 to 37 band. Uh, if we manage to digest above 38 to 40 level, we are going to enter into uh, a uh, into a bullish phase all the way into the 47. Now I know that's not a lot of velocity because the price is creating resist created resistance from these tops right here and also from the overnight trading session highs into the 46 and into the 58. So it's going to be an easy transition into targets. The targets are going to be smaller. So from 40 uh, to about 45, that's about five points into that spot. And remember from that five point range, uh, we can expect about three points more or less into that area. So this is the expectancy of the price uh, following a setup that may occur on smaller time frames for us. Uh, after this spot of the 46 to 47, we can expect continuation back into the 55 zone, 40, uh, 54 to 55 zone. And then this is going to be a heavy resistance zone right here. Then we need to manage and digest 63 in order to advance higher and caution here because we're going to be approaching the four hour 200 SMA, which will be a scale out zone, which would be a trim, trim, trim spot for these uh for uh for the m and &E smp especially so we're going to be moderately bullish uh, for today's trading session since we are very close to transitioning into the green and all the indices and let's move into nasdaq which has some relative structural strength and uh, we can see that the high velocity zone was left behind that coincided today. It was beautiful rotation. For those of you that trade the overnight trading session and pay attention to these rotations, very nice target into this uh, 10 EMA right here for a quick buck. That happened super, super quick. And then we had the stall, stall, propelling higher here. You can see that this is the common denominator for all of the indices uh, that um, a price action created at six o'clock. We have the stall right before the numbers here as well with an inside candle at seven o'clock. And then the price propelled higher following uh, the US uh, data that just came in between eight o'clock and 8.30. And here we are into a continuation pattern. The continuation pattern is a little bit more difficult for NASDAQ because NASDAQ right now is trading into a massive resistance spot. Uh, and this is whole. this is actually a whole entire resistance area from from about 300, we talked about the 300 spot yesterday, which represented yesterday's lows. Uh, and also, and it's the area around the 300. So like I said, this could be 280 to 90 around that area because support resistance are areas, they're not precise numbers. And if we manage to break above this 370 area, then we could see some more advance and advancement higher, but we don't have an easier transition higher uh, in NASDAQ either, because we have a lot of tails into these tops right here that are going to create some pressure into the dynamic of price action. Obviously, we do have a massive resistance. And as you could see, the Dow and the MNACP has not yet achieved the 200 SMA on the four hour, which represents a massive target area for these moves. However, NASA has already achieved that spot. So uh, for NASA, it's going to be a matter of breaking this spot for a higher transition. And this is going to be the easier trade from 430 to 500 and 540 into the NASDAQ. We're not going to talk about the sport zones. You can see the mark on the charts. That is because we are seeing a lot of relative strength and we're not going to discuss the bearish case because we're still uh, trading in a very, very bullish environment right now. All right, Russell, I mentioned before, we have a double bottom support into the 1485, one, two, pivoting at the same time at 2 a.m. And we had the uh, short squeeze uh, into the moderately bullish above zone. And we had the pullback. We can see here that we had the same uh, six o'clock uh, bar that established the range for the overnight trading session. We had the inside bar awaiting the numbers. And then we rotated higher. Most likely that we're going to be achieving the 1513 spot. Uh, and from this point, it's going to become the decision point for price. 
and we are going to look for some kind of formation into this area. The bigger spot for Russell is to digest this whole entire spot from about 13 to 20. And uh, anything that may line up over 18 to 20 is going to be bullish with a continuation higher into the 29 and in very close into the 40. And again, here we have the four hour 200 SMA. Let me just put it with red uh, here. So uh, we're at the same, okay. We have the same notations on everything. All right, and uh, like I mentioned before, uh, gold, uh, we're gonna put it back up again since we have runaway price. We don't have any trades that will line up immediately right now, not unless you got in at three o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock. Um, actually, 8.15 was another trigger in the market. Uh, and uh, right now we have a nice pullback. This is a bull flag formation. You can see it much better uh, when it is into a four hour context. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it, it's looking quite bullish at this point. So we have a double bottom formation. We have the break above with, for, with a short squeeze into the 50 SMA. Uh, yesterday we digested higher and we almost achieved the resistance spot into the 1908. The big achievement for gold was that it finally traded above 1900. It's still not yet out of the waters, but the fact that it's basing above this um, 1879 area, so the 1880 area, it's a huge improvement. If the price is gonna go below the 18, uh, 1880, then we're gonna probably see a transition back into the 1850. But if we hold the 1880 and we start breaking above the 1908, this is gonna be a bull flag continuation. So this is the bottom and this is gonna be the higher low that will transition higher and we may continue over the 19, uh, 1908. It's not gonna be a quite smooth ride because we do have a lot of interference from price action in the prior, um, in the, in the prior spot right here. So we're gonna look for targets uh, into the 1920, 1924, uh, 1930 and 1940. And at which point this 1940 will become a decision point. Last but not least, CL, uh, and uh, this is crude oil. Uh, crude oil as well, you can see we're trading obviously into the new contract. And what I'm seeing in oil is that we had a washout bar. Uh, um, hey, Dan, yeah, it's the, uh, Danny, it's the November, uh, we're trading the November contract. And we're seeing, uh, we saw the washout bar. It came with vengeance to the downside. And we see that we've had a similar price action. So we have some kind of symmetry on the charts. Uh, when we had this bar created here that did a washout and then stalled, popped a little bit higher, and then we had a washout again. The reality is that gold is trading into a much higher structure. And you cannot do anything about this structure right here. It is very chaotic to trade. It has a lot of volatility and includes a lot of risk with it. But if you can see the pullback that we had here, so we have the topping into the 50 SMA, we have the one, two down, and then we finally made the rotation off the 20 SMA. We triggered higher over 39.80. We continued higher and now we're trading inside range. So we're not violating anything. We had a quick visit to the 20 simple moving average. And now we have to decide, oil has to decide whether it wants to stay and stabilize into that 20 SMA uh, and propel higher or if it's going to get back into uh, into the lower territory. From the daily standpoint, still very much sideways. So this is the pullback that we had and you can see that we have been sideways for one, two, three, four, five days. Then we have the washout bar. This was nothing else but uh, taking out all the long traders that uh, that were engaged into this uh, into this so let's say daily rotation here very mild da daily rotation uh, let's say breakout potential breakout so everybody that you know said hey we're gonna try to buy the bottom because this is an uptrend we're gonna try to get it you know at a cheaper price and not with confirmation of a breakout obviously they got uh, shaken out of the trades. And this is very, this, this happens very, very often. All right, so uh, for, for the day trading standpoint, like I said, uh, this, is, this was the short squeeze here that came into resistance. We're gonna have to wait for more price evidence. 
The daily chart, like I said, it's running into the 20 SMA, the 10 EMA, the 200 SMA, all the way into the 20, 3980. And that is going to be a bit of pressure for price. So price may be very choppy into that spot. All right, I'm gonna stop this uh, screen share here and we're gonna navigate back again to our six charts. And we're gonna take a look and see what we have in store for the New York Trading Session Trader. We're gonna move these charts to the five minute structure and we are going to wait for some day trading opportunities. Okay, so let me remind you that in the first hour, I don't take any questions. We need to focus on price action. So, so far we had a big igniting bar into the Dow, into the mini S&P, into NASDAQ, and of course into Russell. Most of the indices have already achieved resistance spots, as you can see here on the charts. Uh, 1513 uh, to 1514 into Russell, achieved spot. Take a look at our resistance spot into the 365.5, achieved resistance, and I was trying to balance out. One thing that I'm noticing is that NASDAQ, a little, even though it has a very strong structure, it tends to be a little bit weaker. However, it's still respecting the 10 EMA. Uh, we are having a huge price extension into uh, the Dow from the 10 EMA, but we're still following. So the overnight price action has not yet violated the 10 EMA since eight o'clock, since we broke out following the uh, news impact. Uh, we're also following the 10 EMA on the five minute in SMP. We're also prices following very nicely right here. Very, very nicely. And this is a very nice pullback or a breakout, uh, depending on how you look at it and how you want to trade it with more risk or less risk. Um, and uh, nice pop right into resistance into the target spot. If we are going to see, and this is something that we will pay attention to, our, our, I, I would most likely like to see uh, a pullback uh, into YM. Uh, that would be my favorite for the open right now, but I would like to see a pullback at least into the 450 uh, in YM. So this is going to be my favorite index today. And um, it has more uh, fluidity to the movement than uh, NASDAQ for the trading session today. Also, the mini SMP, like I said, it's going to move in very small clusters. I like the fact that we're still holding very strongly the um, rotation that is happening on the weekly. And obviously YM is in a rush to cross over that rotation, which is going to be into the 660 zone. Don't forget that today is the last day of the quarter and also of the month. And there is a lot of balancing that will be going on into the market. Just FYI, things are gonna get a little bit whippier today than normal. Sort of like option expiration. So yeah, there is uh, there's balancing today as well, but um, as long as we're going to close a month, not quite a doji. I'm looking through the monthly charts, but we have nice taps on to support. Um, and the price is halfway between high and low. Not a bad structure to end the month. And it's going to be very evident for the upcoming month. Yeah, they're all on the same pace, all on the same pace. Okay, Russell pulling back. Uh, we're having the price stabilizing in NASDAQ. The price is a bit stronger into the Dow than any other index. We're gonna take a look at the Dow biggest component. Oh, yes, we have Boeing that is completing a really huge bull sandwich 
uh, a squeeze right here. So it's engaging into that direction. Disney is getting a bit of momentum to the upside. Walmart remains strong along with Costco. Nike still wanting to uh, issue continuation uh, from yesterday's price action. It's still trading into that very nicely daily buy pocket. Uh, we are having a sideways Home Depot, UNH. Uh, and I also noticed that UNH had some um, block prints and also some um, dark pool prints. And we're noticing that the price is uh, higher. So there is some accumulation into it. McDonald's uh, is holding actually really well. Caterpillar is up against the 20 SMA. Uh, however, it is pointing bullish. So the structure uh, in general for the Dow biggest components uh, is quite bullish. And we have also, I'm gonna take a quick look at NASDAQ because NASDAQ has a little bit of delay here in uh, in um, making this rotation for higher. And that's because Apple sideways, but Apple in a very tight range for the last three days. Uh, same with Google, Amazon, and NVIDIA a little stronger today, attempting to take out the high. BABA incredibly strong, and there were some dark blue prints in BABA and some block trades identified in BABA. And uh, also we have, um, we have financials that are a little bit stronger today. We have Goldman Sachs that is up. Uh, we have uh, <clears throat> American Express that is up. So we do have some uh, financials that are up today, moderate, moderate. So it's nothing very significant at this point, but uh, uh, to be noted. Micron reported earnings yesterday, and it's back to the bottom of the base. To me, this is a very interesting spot at the 48 because it's right on support. So we're going to continue to watch this for a swing trading program. And the Dow continues to be the strongest here. So this is going to be the top, top watch. Also, the S&P is going to be on watch. Like I said, the S&P is not going to have that fluidity, but it still has some room to continue higher. Exactly, Paul, you said it. A lot of shenanigans with the reshuffling, especially now that we are uh, into this end of the month and end of the quarter. Very, very important day for the market. Um, the Dow is trying to do a bowl um, sandwich uh, over, uh, what is the high? Um, 53, 53 to 55. Over 53.55, it could have a pinch play up all the way to 590. The stop for this can be four. Okay, already triggered. By the time, see, I'm, I'm just holding my cursor. I didn't get a chance to get in. Uh, so I'm holding my cursor and I'm noticing the stop. Uh, price is very fast this morning, just FYI, 27,490 would be the stop for those of you that got in and you can expect a target uh, into 580, uh, 580 and then it's going to be under pressure as it go goes into 600, I'm going to look for an alternative entry. Okay, so uh, we're having the same pattern, the squeeze pattern into Russell, and we're having also the pinch squeeze pattern into the MNE S&P. So you're getting the co price condensating into this spot. Nice location here because it's already trading on the 10 uh, EMA, so it's a little stronger. So let's move now to MNE S&P. Okay. I do not like when the price runs away because usually when the price runs away, it's like a forced buy and then a forced sell. And you have to live through uh, the pressure of those gyrations of up and down, up and down. The two minute is trying to rotate into the mini &E S&P and so is the five minute right here uh, in the context of this chunky formation. So I'm just gonna, let, let's, let's wait it out. Same pattern we noticing in Russell. Uh, it is 10.15, uh, I'm sorry, it is uh, 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 9.45. And remember, we have about, I think that if we get a pullback into 10.15, that's what I was about to say. If we're getting a pullback into 10.15, then we should be seeing some more activity into it.
All right, let's just, um, can you guys see the six charts right here? Just wanted to make sure. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Okay, Russell is engaging. I don't like the fact here that we're so elevated from the 10 EMA and from this 400 spot. That's the only reason why I'm not going to engage in that. Uh, let's check out SMP. SMP support right now that can represent the stop is 36. And the trigger point. Okay, the trigger point is 40. Um, could be 45. Let's do 45. Let's do 45 and ES. 45 and ES long. ES long, 45. And the stop is going to be 36. Okay, here it is. And then we have the targets. Uh, the targets are not going to be that impressive. They're not going to be our usual velocity targets. Uh, we're going to have a first target. Let's put it at, you know, yeah, the first target is at 47. Let's put the target at 50. Uh, and uh, 50 is the next spot. I'm not going to use the 47. Not going to scale out at 47. It just uh, had a quick run to 46.50. And by the way, if you guys took that YM trade, you're at target right here into the 580. You can actually put the stop at break even so you don't lose anything on it and look for 600 for the second target. It actually ran into 591. All right, so we're gonna use the tar uh, we're gonna use the stop into 36 into the mini SMP. And um that's a very tight target. And remember, tight, uh, I'm sorry, tight stop uh, for this pattern. Remember, tight stops, tight target. So it's probably going to be uh, after 50, we're going to look for 50. Fifty-three to 54. I'm going to put target 54. We're going to put the target into 54. Uh, the daily is still sideways and there's a pinch into the 20 SMA right here into the 33.50. So that's why uh, we're going to have that 50 target already set. And that's pretty much it. Okay, that 36 represents our uh, stop. All right, now we need to take out that high of 46 to 47. Actually, 46.75 is what we need for the price to start continuing higher.
just a little bit into that direction. NASDAQ snapped higher. Yes, hard stop, hard stop. We have our 46.75 for the high. We need to start going. Look who's gaining the strength right now. NASDAQ. I was a little bit leery on NASDAQ. That was that initial pop just in NASDAQ. We just need, there's literally no price action. Remember, we still have some numbers that are coming out. At uh, 10 o'clock, they're not high impact. They're pending home sales. But if the numbers are going to be good, we can possibly see some more momentum to the upside. We just need to get above that 46.75 once again. All right, a bit snap higher. All right, less than two points away from target. Remember the targets in S&P, they're not gonna be as easy to achieve. We talked about the pre market game plan. My favorite trade was YM, it didn't have a pullback enough. It snapped very, very uh, quickly uh, while we were determining the, uh, the entry levels. It hit the first target. You're in a safe zone right now. If you're still in, we have another tick higher into the 48.5. We're one point and a half away. And we're about five minutes away from news. Pending home sales at 10 o'clock.
All right, we are three ticks away from target one. Remember to scale out into the first target, scale some out, peel some out, trim some out. Here it is, target hit. We're gonna be entering in trail mode. But not quite yet. We still have a little bit of juice. Let's see how high we could go. Let's see if we go into the 54 and 55. We had a high and we do have a high of 52.5. Also, the Dow has achieved the 600 target and it's entering into the high velocity area that we spoke about in the pre-market game plan into the 663. We are less than three ticks away from uh, target number two. No trail yet, no trail spot yet. All we did is we exited partial at 33.50. Don't forget into 54 areas, you're getting to 53 and a half and 54. Remember to trim some more. And then the last slot we will leave for further trailing to see if we could get it back into the 56 or over the 56. That is a huge resistance spot. And by the way, these, this was my least favorite trade, the Imini SMP. We want right now, we want the 33.50 to hold. Move the stops to 33.50. Trail 33.50. For those of you that would like, let's say, to keep the trade for a longer duration of time, you have to look through pullback. So if you want to do that, it can potentially run higher. There is massive resistance here that is coming from the one-hour charts. You can see the double top formation, but it still can run higher into, like I said, into this 55 uh, 56, uh, and also into the 33, um, 33.59 to 33.60. 63, again, massive resistance. But again, it's not going to be like one smooth ride up. It's going to have some kind of gyrations into that area. Okay, we're holding by the tick into the 50s right now. Back to the five minute here. Okay, our spots are holding right now. We get a little bit of sandwich on the two minute rotation. Here's the two minute rotation with a little mini sandwich. Keep the trail stop at 50. And remember those of you that wanna keep the position, you're gonna lift or pull back and the pullback can possibly come back into the 3340s before moving higher. So you would just have to play price action. It's up to you to do that. I'm going to cut my trade at 33.50. All right, we need to get a print over 33.54 in order to start some more dynamic price action to the upside. We're seeing the price rejection from the 200 SMA into NASDAQ. And this is gonna slow down the momentum a little bit here, okay? We got a 53, we got a 53.25 again. We need to get over that 53.25. Here we go, here we go, now's the time. We did it, 54, 54 target. Trim spot right on the nose. The trail stop is still 33.50. For those of you that are looking just for one to two targets, you're probably out. The rest of us are still in trail mode and the stop is still 33.50. Hey Michael, no re-entries. Right now we're running into targets. Oh, and by the way, we send you like a few emails and I sent you an email just a few moments ago. 
Okay. So no, no, no re-entries right now. Francis, Froggy, <laughs> Kermit Green. Okay, so we have our 54. Remember, we're running into this very, very choppy, uh, tight <laughs> spot right here. So right now, you know, fasten your seat belts. I don't have another trail stop other than 50. I don't. I wish I did. I don't. Okay, as we're going into the 56, then we're going to start looking for a tighter trail. Okay, we have a high 54.75. Let's see that 55 print. Brand new high into the Dow 6, 646. See how NASDAQ is gyrating for the four hour 200 SMA? You guys see it here? Let me just take all this. <laughs> okay, here's the 200 SMA. And this is a bull flag formation. If the price in NASDAQ is going to manage to break above this spot, it's going to go to the next spot. Woohoo! Good job, guys. Stay in, stay in, stay in. Stay in. Let's see if we get it as close as possible. When we get it to 63, we're going to start trailing 60. Stay in, stay in. Right now, let's protect 55. Let's protect 55. Trail 55. Hands on. Trail 55. That's 33.55. I just posted it in the room. Don't let it go below 33.55. We want the momentum to continue. We were one tick away from 60. Let's see if we take out the 60s. Of course, Melina, tell me where, um, tell me where you got in. And uh, if you need a if you need a trail stop, wow, that's fantastic, Lance. Thank you so much for the information. Honestly, I didn't have time to like my hand is literally glued right now to the mouse. <laughs> Boom, fifty print, guys. Melina, uh, uh, eighty six. Uh, your trail stop right now should be. 410, 410, Melina, 410, 410. Okay, those of us that are in SMP, hold on to your positions. Good job, Melina. I'll keep an eye on it for you. Uh, you should see right now, let me just go back here for your targets. Okay, so this is the big spot right here. So trail, trail tighter, uh, trail the 410. Okay, the next target levels, if we get there, 60, uh, we're going to have 63 and 65 for the M&E S&P, 63 and 65. I'm seeing a slowdown in momentum into NASDAQ because of the 200 SMA. Okay, now the big issue is going to be a print. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Trail 57, guys, ES Trail 57. ES 57, 57 trail in ES. There it is, 57. Don't let it go below that. Don't let it go below that. Okay, Melina, you should prepare to exit. 410, 410. Don't let it go below 410. And we are 57. If anyone is in YM or Russell or anything else, just let me know. I can help you out. 57.5. 
and we're done. Pressure off. All right, things need to reshuffle right now. So we just made 10 points into the m and &E SMP. Nice trade. Nice, 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 nice trade. Awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. <clears throat> Laura, thank you so much for the heads up on that. Lawmakers will give stimulus a serious try. Oh, that would be fantastic. That's fuel for the market. So yeah, we got to stay long. We got to stay long. And by the way, mini SMP and most of the indices after the drama in the overnight trading session, leaving some tails or leaving some rocket bars behind. That really nice tails for continuation into tomorrow. If we hold the str strength into the trading session today, we're going to go boom tomorrow for higher. Nice. Very, very nice. Finally, YM is joining bandwagon into the high velocity zone along with the mini S&P and NASDAQ. Russell still has a little bit more room to go into that spot, a little bit weaker, but intraday some strong price action. And like I said, you know, uh, today I'm going to be a little bit more cautious because it is the last day of the month and the quarter. Uh, but as I was saying earlier, for those of you that like to keep it for a longer duration of time, remember, we are getting very extended, by the way. We are into oversold zones. And when you're looking at the hourly charts, look at where we have the 50 SMA, look at where we have the 20 SMA. So we're, we're just trading into thin air right now and into a massive resistance. So again, for those of you that are wanting, you know, to get new, get in new trades, I'm reluctant of getting the trades right into these highs. I'm not saying that this resistance is not going to, um, it's not going to be broken, but, uh, or can definitely be broken, right? If we get a punch to the upside here, we're definitely going to go higher. We'll take a look. NASDAQ is uh, dissolving this 200 SMA right here. There's another mini sandwich, kind of like similar sandwich than what we have here. Now, remember that we never had a 10 o'clock reversal time. We never had a reversal time. So this is high time for reversal time, hence my, you know, tighter trail. See, bull flag formation, shallow pullback by breakout. Um, I will not engage in a long here. We just exited. Uh, oil inventory place today. Drum roll. 
I can show you how you can possibly trade it, but please do not trade it. That I, I'm afraid to say it because I'm afraid that some of you may get in. And I don't want that. Uh, I can show you how to trade a news trade, but please do not trade it. Very risky. Yeah, let's see if we get it. If we get a pullback to 33.50 in ES, if we get a pullback to 27,600 uh, 27, in YM, right here. So we need to get it back into the prior resistance. And if we get it back into the prior resistance, we could see a rotation that could take the price back up, back, and we could have a target spot right into the high velocity zone. And then we enter the next spot into the 850, 820 to 850. <clears throat> so it's all this stimulus right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to engage into a trade right away. I'm seeing Russell pulling back. Uh, I think that NASDAQ has just made a little peekable high. And then probably it, we are trading into reversal time. And I'm telling you right now that if the m and SMP is going to start trading below 55, 55 to 54.50, it's going to start coming in. But it needs to print up 55. It prints to 55, it's going to go back in. <clears throat> we have uh, about 16 minutes to uh, 1030 and that is actually the prime time trigger time we haven't had any kind of pullback and the price is levitating into the highs into the overextended zones i guess we could draw our attention a little bit into oil i can show you but please do not engage in any kind of trades you can see the momentum and price action has slowed down quite a bit and we already have a support, somewhat of a minor support zone into the 39.30 spot. Still very early for oil. All right, so it seems that uh, YM, ES are not giving up any kind of space they're really trading tight within inside prior five minute price action ranges. <clears throat> By the way, those of you that are in the swing program, nice start in CRM. CRM just had a really nice pop higher a few moments ago. About three minutes ago, made a high of 355. I'm glad that we entered aggressively because there is a very small chance that we're going to have some decent, uh, let's say a risk to reward kind of play here. Dow stocks are doing pretty well. Dow stocks are stalling as well, but they're they're strong.
There's a lot of slowdown in momentum right now in some of the stocks that I'm going through that are some big components into these indices. Mm. Yeah, LNKCY finally waking up, Lori. Finally, finally. These are small stocks that need a little bit more time. Sometimes when you when they hit the trigger, they just go right away, but sometimes they need lots of time to digest. And I'm noticing like the volume is going down a little bit in it. So, but anyway, nice run into 317. <clears throat> Um, like I said, I'm not excited about these uh, breakouts that are happening right now. One minute, two minutes. <clears throat> They're happening right into resistance and more so we're having a double top in a mini SMP. I'm not buying this double top formation right here. Okay. To me, it's like really extended and needs to pull back before we can go higher. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to give back the 10 points that we just made. Hey, Danny. Yeah, Walmart looks good today. Uh, Paul, think or swim? Really? Oh, um, call them, Paul. Call them. I don't have any issues right now, but now that you told me, I'll uh, I'll be very careful. No, Doji man, never, 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 never. And especially if I would have had, if if we would have been right here or even into this spot, yeah, I I would go for another trade. But right now, buying it into the highs is just crazy. I'm not buying it into resistance. No, no, no. Uh, if I see something like really low risk, yeah, I'll definitely. But we do need a pullback. I don't care, you know, if the price runs away. It's just, it just probably wanted to tap into this 63 spot. Look how it went. I mean, literally, guys. It went to 62.75. We had resistance at 63. Like, you can't get it any better than this. <laughs> Ten minutes away from all inventory numbers. And the mini SP is doing a little mini, mini, mini five minute, let's say breakout pattern. 55, it's gonna be 63 by 55. To me, this is a wide risk. The next target, well, it does have room into the 80s. I'm really reluctant because we haven't had a pullback and I think this base is trying to consolidate the price for another pop higher. Ten thirty is prime time trigger time as well. Maybe half the size or a quarter of the size, half the size or a quarter of the size or those of you that have not Engaged into the first trade. This could be an entry at 63 and the stop, even though it's levitating into the those highs right here. Now, you know what? I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. It's really into those highs right there. And everything is, everything is suspended into these highs. We have a double top right here. It can continue higher, but I don't know. I don't want to buy it into these highs. We already, and honestly, we have already ran higher for two and a half hours, constant, two and a half hours of bullish momentum. 
I'm not saying it's not going to go higher because if we escape over 63 in ES, contingent on holding the 54, 55, uh, we can start running into the 75 and 80. That's what I'm thinking, Paul. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I, I don't really like to buy into double tops, right? I don't. And of course, you know, like when you're seeing the price run, you know, like you go like, oh yeah, it was there. It was so evident because the, the fact of the matter is this is a mini range right here. Mini range. This is the breakout spot into the 45. This is your stop into the 400. So yeah, this may be an escape area right here. 63 by, yeah, 63 by 54, 55. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. If you guys wanna take it, go ahead. You know, I, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna protect my 10 points. It can run for, a, for um, uh, like I said, for 70, 73. So it, you could possibly have another 10 points here. I'm not saying. And even a little bit more right into the 80s because it has a nice void into the 80s. So we can start running. My concern is that we haven't had a pullback. Uh, we've been incredibly bullish constantly for about three hours. We're into massive resistance from the one hour. And... Um, I don't know. I'm just going to wait it out. <laughs> Eddie, the potential entry was 63, over 63. So 63, 63, and the stop is below this little uh, area right here. So I would put it 54 and a half, under 55. So 54 and a half would be the area. I'm seeing a lot of, and if you guys, I don't think you guys can see the price action here, but we have doji, doji, doji. So there's a lot of indecision. We have a peekable high. We do have room to expand higher to 800, okay? So we do have room for this 800 spot. You see the dotted line? But there's a lot of, of uh, a lot of sideways, sideways price action. The sideways price action is not bad, but in fact, it needs to stay here a longer period of time, at least to have this 10 EMA catch up with the price, and then it can start pushing it higher towards the 800 area. So yeah, we do have space here into the 800, and here is the NASDAQ runaway price. Russell is stalling at this point, coiling into this resistance. The 10 EMA caught up with price. Um, so basically, uh, NASDAQ right now is the only one that is, uh, that is rallying. And the reality is that we have a trade into the uh, into the queues, into the swing program. So that's why, you know, like if I miss this day trade here, I know that I'm making tenfold in my swing trade in the queues. So I'm not worried about that. Which by the way, is just unbelievably awesome. <laughs> just unbelievably awesome. By the way, guys, two cents away from target at 280 in the queues. We have target at 280. It is a target two zone at 280. You gotta love swing trading. Exactly, Iron Man. They do seem toppy. They do seem toppy. No, not pulling back. Not pulling back. But like I said, I, I don't wanna engage. I don't wanna engage. I, I'm just staying away. I have a really nice position and the swings and the queue. So that's making the money. So I don't have to chase NQ for a day trade where I'm more likely to stop out than a swing. And uh, four minutes away from CL. News, uh, oil numbers, <laughs> oil numbers. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Neo is on fire. Guys. Guys. 
Those of you that are in NEO in the SWING program, we have alternative targets into 22, 22 and a half and 23. We have FIBs in, that lo in those locations. Send out a tweet this morning. That's right, Iron Man. That is right. That is right. But still a huge improvement from the overnight. It ran like 70 points from the lows. It ran from 32, oh yeah. So what was the low here? 32.91. Yeah, 70 points. That's huge. So it had a rally of 70 points here. So are we gonna chase it knowing that it's up 70 points? If we get a pullback, we may get some kind of action. And we may get a trade. But usually, you know, the first move and the first trade that you have, that, that is pretty much it. We'll put it back on the five here. And Russell is strengthening. You can see here that it's holding the prior uh, resistance, which ab absolutely now becomes support for price action. Okay, so you don't get confused. I would love to get a pullback because yeah, absolutely. Marissa, if we get a pullback, then we could get another trade. We will let the price reshuffle. Let the price reshuffle. <laughs> You're right, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I, during the debate, the price went uh, went higher, wildly higher, and uh, at ten o'clock after the debate, the price went back down, and it continued down in the overnight trading session, and then it snapped back up and two at two or three o'clock in the morning. Why and base is actually a little bit more interesting than the mini &E SMP one because the, uh, the Dow is already trading above that hypothetical double top. That double top hypothetical is into the 27,600. But here's, the, here's, my, here's why I'm leery about a trade now. You see this doji right here? It's gonna be bullish above with high risk and it's gonna be bearish below. So it's gonna be bearish below 65. It's gonna be bullish above 25. This is gonna be like high risk right here because we could see another peekable high and then the price may go back down. Pull back to 600 would make it very appealing. That's why these five minute charts are a bit, okay, here's the oil inventory numbers. Um, if we get the price over 70, we are going to have a run if the price is gonna dissolve the 70s, we're gonna have a run into the 40s and $40 and $40.20. And if the price under 39.20 may go back to 39 and 38.80. Okay. Um, five minute rotation to the downside here in NASDAQ as well. Let's check out the five minute candle, a uh, 15 minute candle, five, 15 minute candle with a topping tail showing signs of topping, but not signs of reversing yet. Five minute is still very stable uh, in uh, NASDAQ, 
The five minute in the S&P is stable. We're getting a rotation from a doji in Russell at this moment. Russell has room to this 1530 spot right here, but it has another high here into the 21. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky. I don't know what to say guys, because I don't wanna give back my 10 points. It's the end of the month and uh, anything can happen into, into the PM session. And, and again, it's all about the narrative, you know, all about the narrative. And by the way, oil is not moving at all. What's up with that? <laughs> Maybe they had to digest that sourness. I know. Okay, so oil is definitely not moving. It's, or maybe my platform is not moving. Guys, check up your, uh, check your prices. Those of you that are not trading with Thinkorswim, this is kind of weird. We're not getting any kind of reaction following the oil inventory numbers. Wow, oil is really dead. Still staying in a base. Amy, thanks so much for checking out. Wow. Not moving. Oil not moving. We may get an explosion over 63 here. Um, not going to do it. Uh, we just have to wait this one out, guys. It's past 1030. 1030 can act as a re reversal time because we haven't had any reversal time at 10 o'clock. I, I would say I'm pretty much done for the day at this point. So if we don't get anything in about 10 to 15 minutes, Pretty much done. S&P still holding. Um, everything is holding. Uh, new high in Russell. Like I said, Russell is moving off of this uh, rotation spot right here, off, off of this doji. Range, here's the thing. The doji was within a range. The doji was within a range and now just making a punching a new high. Yeah, there's nothing to trade in oil. Okay, so here's a trade idea for those of you guys that did not participate in this morning's uh, trade uh, in the mini S&P. Uh, there is another trade possibility for you over 63 or 64. So right now we really need to see it over 63, 75. So the entry would be 64. If you're still in, the stop is still the same, 54 and a half. And you're going to be looking for a target into the uh, 72 to 73. 75 and 80 for the M&E S&P. 
Uh, and as far as YM goes, YM is consolidating. I'm a little concerned about this doji. Uh, if we see it, the price below 60, we're gonna start coming in. Okay, we're gonna start coming in. But at this moment, it's gonna be bullish above 725 with a continuation into 800, okay? But contingent on breaking up above 25. So it needs to break above 25. I am not going to take any other trades, but these are the two ideas that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> Laura, totally. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just dead. We should all get Teslas and get over it with. Let's check our Bob. This is gasoline. Let's check the um, four hour, sorry. Yeah, it's stuck into resistance. Four hours stuck into resistance. The one hour into resistance. They're all trading into resistance. It's a tough area, guys. Like I said, these are the two ideas. That's it. Let's see heating well. Yeah, they're all into resistance. That's why CL is not going anywhere. Oh, and by the way, very interesting natural gas that we should keep it on watch. Uh, natural gas on wash. Let's check out the four hour here. So there's a four hour rotation, very small target into 56. Uh, I like the daily, um, uh, not the daily, sorry. Uh, here's a monthly. Okay. I like the monthly into it. You know, I, I need, we need to hold above this, um, um, 50 SMA right here and it may want to go back up but nothing nothing for now so just just a watch okay so remember guys 64 if you want another trade 64 is going to go to 70 uh 70 to 73 75 80 and why i'm over uh over 25. Okay, oil is triggering a little bit here. Let me create a bit more pressure. <laughs> Chris, that is just hilarious. <laughs> Uh, Rakesh, yeah, okay, here's why I'm punching higher. Like I said, I'm not taking the trades. If you guys, I, I can help you out. For me, pressure off, I made my money, I'm done. Yeah, AUDC, R yes, Rakesh, very interesting. Eddie, you're an ES, stay in, keep the, uh, keep the hard stop, 54 and a half. And let it go. You want to uh, you want to go into a target of uh, seventy two to seventy three, then seventy five and eighty. And if any of you guys are in trades, let me know. Uh, Jerry, you're in YM. YM the same. Keep your stop. 
below this low right here, 60. Put your stop at 59. And you're gonna look for a target close to 800. As soon as you're getting into the 80, between 80 and take profits obviously into the 80s because 80 is the target one. And then the second target is gonna be the whole number. And make sure that you, um, when the price is getting into, uh, the 90s and especially over 90s be very proactive and ready to pull the trigger on taking your profits into uh, between 90 <clears throat> and the whole number. Hey, Gary, good session today. Good job. <clears throat> well, we had a little bit of price follow through, which is good. All right. Why well, I'm giving up. Uh, okay, so Russell still holding? Of course. Mini Bear, 474. Uh, you got in um, NASDAQ, NASDAQ Mini Bear. Yeah. NASDAQ didn't really have a great entry here because See, it pinched this high, so we needed to confirm the 80s in order to get in. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You're, you're right here. You got in here at 448. This is the, this is the sell zone. This is the pullback confirmation zone. Don't get it on support. Remember, we had that discussion. Don't ever get it on support. It's the support can break immediately. Wait for a rotation into that spot. I always say, wait for confirmation, wait for confirmation. Uh, if you're in, you have to live through the pullback. If you don't have a plan, you have to live through the pullback because this is the stop for a possible move above this um, 80 zone, this whole cluster. Um, you have to wait it out. You have support into the 430. It's a pretty good support zone here into the 430. Uh, we, you have the uh, 200 SMA from the four hour, plus you have the 10 EMA into the 430. Okay, Russell is making you high. So there are some encouraging signs there that the price may still continue its momentum. Remember, we had punches to the upside in the ES, NYM, not in, uh, not in NASDAQ, because here's the thing with NASDAQ. NASDAQ made a peekable high here, and then it stalled, 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 stalled. It did a little shebang here to the upside. Okay, this is gonna be definite. We have a doji here, guys, doji alert. You have the doji alert, the price is gonna get below 700, it may still want, it may want to go to the bottom of the range. You need to see a print immediately of 64 in YM. Just letting you know that this time is not my favorite time to trade. Okay. Not my favorite time to trade. We should have been going strong for another 30 minutes right now into price, into price dynamics. And then the slowdown should be in about 20 minutes to in 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so again, you need to hold this support zone. There's nothing you do, you're still into the trade. But remember, be mindful about this doji here because if it, if it trades below, most likely it's gonna revisit this 10 EMA and you're it's getting closer and closer to the stop area. Okay, new high in Russell that's encouraging for price action in YM. Uh, don't add without any kind of confirmation. I'm gonna watch that for you. When you add, you need to have technical spots when you add, okay? So you need to have a technical reason and you need to have a firm stop. Okay, so let me peek again. You have 475. Uh, the ad spot may be over 
Let's see what this high here, 52, over 52. But definitely you have a two minute spot there. So you could actually have a hard stop now of 11,430. Okay, that could be your hard stop 430 below that two minute pivot. I would not necessarily add now on the two minute because it's the time of the day when you should be respecting the five minute. And we have about two minutes into 1050, the three minutes actually, two and a half minutes. And that next five minute candle is going to be your gauge into the next momentum zone. Trades that are developing around this time, you're more, you're more likely to stay into them for a long period of time. I like to get in and out. So I like the fast paced momentum. Okay. We're still holding pretty strong ranges in uh, YM and ES here. Nice momentum. New high in YM. Uh, NASDAQ uh, has, uh, NASDAQ, here's the problem with NASDAQ here. and. Guys, those of you that took YM, take I would place my stop at break even, but that's just me. And you're into break even territory in ES. There is an alarm in uh, NASDAQ, and NASDAQ is telling us here that there is a topping sign. Okay, so if it trades below 30, 35 to 36, it may enter into a sell zone. Uh, and if it breaks 30, it's going to start coming in. Okay, just FYI, just letting you guys know. Okay. Uh, Iron Man, YM stop, 640. Uh, I would not, yeah, I would not give it that much. Like I said, I, 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 I would just choke it. Okay, I, I would just choke it. You don't have the right momentum into it. Into it. I would put my stop at break even right now. So if I was in YM, I would put my stop at break even. That's it. And I wouldn't even stay in SP right now. If you still want to stay in SP, your stop is still 54 and a half. Okay. But I, I would be leery. I, I, I'm, I'm like literally leery about staying into trades. To me, I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with this price action. Okay, cool. Iron Man, you got it. Uh, if, if we cross below, see, th these are three spots here. The first, uh, there, there are three spots of massive support in NASDAQ. Okay. Three spots, uh, that are not going to be that easy to, to break, but on, a, let's say you can imagine that everybody that I got in at three o'clock in the morning, they want to take some profits, right? So my thoughts are that if it breaks 37, it's going to go no questions asked back into the 30s. If 30 is not going to improve in price action, it's going to go uh, into this uh, dotted line support here into the 420. And so th there is a very big cluster. So this is the last shelf of defense right here into the 420s, 415 to 420s. And if it breaks that, then possibly into the 10 EMA. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing right now.
see this doji right here. See, uh, this is the problem. It's an inside bar. It's going to be bullish above 80, but it can be bearish below, but bearish below for a fill of this uh, bubble of air right here. So I think it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, here's the here's the break even right here into a mini SMP. I would not want to stay in, but it's up to you guys. If you if you want to live through the pullback, that's fine. But I don't know how steep or how shallow this pullback is going to be. Remember, it's the end of the month and more so it's the end of the quarter. I'm not saying we could have right now, we could have Pelosi agreeing with Mnuchin and say, hey, we have a new stimulus and the market is going to go ballistic. Okay. Uh, but that is literally trading on hope because uh, let's do the, uh, let's do a market wrap into this uh, time right here. Let me just uh, put the defaults on. Well, yeah. Let's take them back to the one hour. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you can see why I'm a little concerned about price action. Okay, let's start with YM. Okay, let's put the default here. So we have our markings. Okay, it's trading into almost a triple top. If you don't consider this spike that we had in last night, it could be a triple top, but definitely it's a double top. If the price is gonna accelerate higher, and then it's gonna pull back into this prior spot, then it finds relative strength and it could still continue higher. But right now, I'm assuming there should be some profit taking into this pattern. We haven't had a reversal time. We had a 1030 trigger time that just pinched the price higher, but just a little bit, uh, but then it didn't issue a continuation. The most important thing is that NASDAQ is still trading into resistance. We still have the S&P trading into massive resistance and we still have the YM that traded, finally entered the high velocity zone, and we are trading above this prior pivot high. So any pullback into this area, into the Dow, we may see a rotation for higher, but that is down the road. And also in Russell, Russell already trading above this triple top formation, running higher, and then we have the pullback back into the 20s, we can still, by the way, guys, we still have room for higher. That's why we have our markings right here on the charts and we discuss them in the pre-market game plan. If we should get price action velocity, we are gonna start, uh, we're gonna start moving higher, okay? But we're gonna have to wait and see how uh, everything is panning out. Also, CL is trading right into the 200 SMA and is trading into resistance from price action into the 39.73. That's why it's not accelerating anywhere. Uh, and uh, we're having gold that is still holding the bull flag formation. All right, so this is kind of like what I'm seeing right now in the market. So you can see that YM is just going back and forth, back and forth to that breakout spot that we had on the two minute. And it's just not doing anything. I'm just gonna keep the price action on the two minute because you could obviously see the size of the candles have, um, are smaller, have diminished. Uh, we're still trying to regain here at the 20 SMA. So we rode this uh, 10 exponential moving average we left the 20 SMA behind. There were really nice equidistance. So that means that velocity of price action has the potential to still continue higher. Uh, and uh, we're still coiling into this 20 SMA. So I'm, what I'm seeing is that relative strength, we may still continue higher here. And also let's take the mini SMP into the two minute. We have a grinding rate. So we had a nice acceleration higher. We have the price, price stabilizing into these highs. Uh, the regain of the 20 SMA, we have the same equidistant fanning out of the moving averages, showing the power trend can still continue contingent on holding the 20 SMA spots. 
Uh, and also with NASDAQ, you can see here that we're trading below the 20 SMA. So this is the reason why I don't particularly like NASDAQ that much right now is because it started to trade below the 20 SMA. And also Russell from the two minute, uh, you can see that it's still trading above the 20 SMA. Nice equidistance knife of, of the moving averages, fanning out of the moving averages, suggesting power trend in motion and in play until momentum subsides. And again, when we exited the trade, the momentum is st was still intact. Right now, the momentum is a, a little bit lost into NASDAQ. And uh, we're going to have to wait and see. You know, definitely no additional trades right now. No additional trades right now. Uh, Russell is trying to do a two minute rotation. You can see that at this time of the day, 11 o'clock, the two minute time frame is not that accurate. So we'd have, you would have to wait for a meaningful uh, time frame, much more meaningful time frame for the afternoon, which is the five or the 15. Um, okay, here's the rotation finally happening in NASDAQ, but this is just a two minute. Let's take a look at the five minute. Uh, Mini Bear, I was just mentioning the five minute. Okay, this is what th your definite stop should be under this 30. That's why I mentioned the 30, okay? And if you wanted to add, you need to look at a technical ad and the technical ad, like I said, very problematic at this time of the day, but you would have had to wait for that 50 spot to add. It just tapped very mildly into that 51 and then it retracted. So no ads at this point, okay? Just, just hang on tight, have your stop at 30, your entry with, was not in sync with any kind of momentum in here. And that's why, you know, you just, you just have to, you know, play it out. That, when you get in a trade, you, you have to make sure that you have a really good solid plan um, for, uh, you know, for any trades. Oh, good, 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 good. You got out. Perfect. Awesome. As long as you didn't lose anything, that's fantastic. Um, Jerry YM 659, I would not have, uh, and I know you typed it in the room several times, and I told you I would not have given that much room to it, uh, based on this two minute right here. Um, I would not give it that much room to 660. Like I said, I would, I, I would have... Like I mentioned, you know, I would have gotten out at break even, or yeah, if you um, see, it's it's the five minute rotation here, uh, right into the seven seven twenties. Yeah, like I said, uh, T two. Well, I said it. Uh, I said it. I, I would get out at break even and. You have to keep the stop here into the 54 and a half if you still want to stay in. But this could be a longer duration. You could be in this trade like all day today, the way the price action is moving. So this is my thought, second thought, second thought. If you want to listen to the second thought, if you didn't listen to the first thought, now if you want to listen to the second thought, uh, yeah, you could put the stop in, um, if those of you that are in YM, it should be under 660, uh, under, yeah, under 666, six, yeah, under this area right here. But the problem is that you have this minor support zone, <laughs> zone double, uh, double, not minor support, but support zone into the 65. But the problem is that if, if you're losing the momentum off of the 10 EMA, you're going to fall into the 20 SMA and the price is going to try to hook here. So it's a very sensitive topic uh, because you could have a stop. See, this is the area where you would be required to have a soft stop. I'm not encouraging anyone by any way, shape or form today to have a soft stop because you can expect massive profit taking from what you just had this morning, uh, the rally that we had. But definitely you need to hold this 60, that's it. There's a small chance that the price may wanna hook into this 40s because there's a 20 SMA, but that's it. Those of you that are in yes, the second thought, if you wanna keep your stop, the original stop is 54 and a half, period. That's it. No other trades at this point. <laughs> 
Danny, yes. <laughs> okay, Michael, you're definitely going against the trend. Uh, it is kind of like a Hail Mary <laughs> here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about that short. Uh, look for a target. What's your entry? Let's say th 33 and a half, let's say 33. This is a North short zone, Michael. Yeah, a North short zone. Um, it's a no buy zone. This is a sit on your hand zone. <laughs> okay, but it's hard because this, this is like going, going against what we do. Your stop should be over 51, okay? 51 to 53, that's your stop. Uh, your next support zone can be, <laughs> look for a target into 20. Look for a target into 20 and, and kind of like, like, and I, this time I mean it like fingers crossed. Okay. Fingers crossed into the twenties, twenties, probably 18 or so, uh, in about two minutes, if it runs over 48, going to start snapping higher probably to 51 but we'll see no literally this is a no short zone here when you're having like you can expect here's the problem guys when the price is accelerating higher the way it did this morning you can't expect a pullback but pullbacks and ongoing strong trends with strong narrative are not to be shortened. You have to wait for the pullback and then buy it on strong days because you don't know how steep or how shallow the pullback is going to be. So in uptrends, we never short pullbacks, especially in days like today where when you're seeing like we're having a solid, 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 and when you were seeing, man, an hour ago, we had, so at 10 o'clock, we didn't have a reversal. At 10.30 trigger time, we didn't have a reversal, uh, but we have just a little mild punch to the upside. So there was no sign of, you know, some kind of a pullback. But I can walk you through your trade. Uh, we, we have to wait. We have to wait right now. Okay. So now we have the five. Okay. So if it trades over 45, it's going to snap higher. So exit. Yeah, here it is. Here's the momentum. See what I mean? Here's the momentum. That's a five minute rotation. It's very strong and an ongoing trend. Don't short, especially with narrative. Okay. Yeah, rule number one, and this is the biggest rule guys, never short an uptrends. Remember that the momentum has the tendency to slow down from 11 o'clock to about 11.30 when the um, London session closes. Exactly, Ari Man. You got it, Ari Man. Exactly. There it is. There it is. There it is. Right on, Iron Man. Exactly. You get the pullback into this spot right here. See? From 50 to a, but he, he, even here, you know, you were holding this range very bullishly. And we did talk about that. Um, where was that? Okay, the 15 minute. Uh, guys, literally, I am done for the day.
Michael, you fail to understand the logic behind calling a trade YM, taking heat from the get go, and then calling break even. Because you don't want to put the risk on. You watch price action. If the price action is not accelerating the moment, the minute, or the second, second minute, or the third minute, if it's not going instantly, why would you want to feel the heat? So no, take it at break even. Am I understanding it right? And I even said it, Michael, for me, it's YM was not a trade. I said, for those of you that are not in, for those of you that did not make the 10 points in ES, if you want an alternative trade, even though at the time, you know, at the time of the day was messy, right? Because that's what it was. You didn't have a pullback. You didn't have a setup. All you had, it was a range. And the pattern was a hundred percent right on the money because it was a range breakout on the two minute. Here it is. Here's the range breakout on the two minute. This is the 25 right here. You see the range? This is the stop. This is the entry. And you, this is a five minute chart. So it triggered higher. And then guess what? It stayed, it stalled, it stalled. Finally, it made it a little bit higher into the 63. And then what did it do? Your obligation as a trader is constantly to look at price action. If it's moving towards you, if it's moving against you, and you have to take the decision. At the time of the day when the trade was called, it was not a favorable time for a setup to have continuation. And especially into the double top formation. Okay, so again, if you see that it's not achieving targets immediately into the 80s, don't you want to protect yourself? I mean, I would rather protect myself and have a break even trade and wait for a different setup than have a loss and then have to recuperate that loss. Does that make sense? Michael, does that make sense? So I said it multiple times. I said, I'm not taking the trade because it does. it's not a high odds trade. It's not. The high odds trade happened. They're done. They're done. And I even said that the best momentum is in the morning. So the, the, the thing is that I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even, exactly, um, right, Danny. So we're, we're having the range again. We're having the range again. So in this spot right here, the breakout point would be somewhere where I'm holding my cursor over the 50s or so on a conservative, but this is very sloppy here. So after, th this is the end of the momentum right here at 10 o'clock. And from 10 o'clock, I've mentioned it probably at least, and by the way, this is a recording and uh, shoot me an email because I'm gonna send you out the recording so you're gonna be able to re-listen to the whole conversation because these are things that I mentioned in the room on and on and on and on. Because once we, have exited the trade. And the reason why we exited the trade when we did an ES and we trailed tighter was why? Because of the 10 o'clock reversal time. This is a major reversal time in the market. When the price moves parabolic or not even, not, even if it's not moving parabolic, but if it's moving higher from a swing low to a swing high from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, you have to take profits. You never marry a trade and say, I'm complacent, I'm a day trader, but I'm gonna be so complacent, I'm gonna stay in the trade forever. No, because you have 10 o'clock, plus you had news releases at 10 o'clock, which actually helped us a little bit. And right after 10 o'clock, you can expect a pullback. 
If the pullback is not happening, you're more than likely to see a range development into 1030. And then at 1030, you're going to expect a pullback that should have happened at 10 o'clock or a shake out. They shake you out of the trade. Institutions love to shake you out of the trade. Yeah, sure. Uh, shoot me an email, guys. You know what? I'm going to post it. I'm going to post the recording on the feed. I'm going to post the recording on the feed. But like I said, you know, after a big move that you had, and we even talked about it, I'm repeating it again. The S&P had 70 points from the bottom. It rallied 70 points from the bottom. The Imini S&P, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, let's, let's check out here. Okay, so what was the bottom here? Uh, 27,039. And into 10 o'clock, it ran into 27.760, let's say. It rallied 700 points. Let's take it back. So that's why I'm very cautious, Michael. I want to make sure that you understand my thought process. This is the way I trade. And this is the thought process. So if, I, if you have a rally, right, aren't you going to be cautious taking the next trades? And that's why I said I'm not taking another trade. It's the end of the month. It's the end of the quarter. There's a lot of balancing that can happen. Plus, there's narrative, right? You, the stimulus talk is in full throttle and full swing again. It's back on the menu. Yesterday, when we had that drop in the market, okay, what do, you, what do you think that was all about? Pelosi Mnuchin, again, at it, okay? They did not reach a conclusion, boom, the market went down. The market went back up last night, and then it went back down. So the bottom line is that after you see a huge advancement, <laughs> okay, once you see a huge advancement in price, you have very low expectations of a continuation higher. So therefore, if you see a mini range, you can say, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm taking it at 725 and I'm putting a stop here under this low of 650. But when you see that the price is making a topping tail here, you know, it, it ran a little bit higher and then it's like, man, it's going back down. When it's going back up and when it's going into your break even spot, don't you want to protect that break even? I say, if it's working, fine. But if it's not working, guess what? I want to really protect my profits and wait for another setup that is developing the market so I can make money on that. <laughs> uh, Danny, that's too funny. Oh yeah, and by the way, no changes in gold, guys. Absolutely no changes in gold. No changes in gold. All right. Um, remember that trading is about identifying odds into the market, identifying high odds, knowing when the best possible trade may line up. And if the trade is not going in your direction right away, okay, then you have to take a second look at price action. So what I mean by that is go into zoom in smaller time frames, one minute, two minute, five minute, and look at the correlations. Okay. Look at the correlations. When you're in a trade, you constantly have to look at price action. Like 
There's not one nanosecond that you should not look at all your time frames. Look for continuation, rejection, continuation, rejection. And when you're seeing continuation and rejection on any kind of trade, any kind of trade, and you have multiple chances here, back, it's moving back. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Okay. And we discussed about this doji. Okay, we discussed about this doji. Bullish above, bearish below, right? So we, it, it just went almost a little bit halfway, not really halfway, because we talked about a target into the 780 and then into the 800. I'm just protecting my profits. My number one and the reason why I'm building my account like day after day after day after day is because I have a really good hands-on approach. If, the, if I see a change in the structure of price, I immediately readjust my plan, immediately readjust my plan. Exactly, Iron Man, that's the concept. I watch price action in a trade, like I'm a pilot going to drop a nuclear bomb any second on my time. You're absolutely right, I couldn't set it any better. Because you play with price action and you play with higher odds and when you see that the price is really having a hard time advancing or declining you really want to make sure that you're prepared it's just like exactly it's just like in the army it's just you have to be like really hands-on paul that's absolutely right the best trades work immediately from the get-go very rarely that you're gonna see a trigger and then you're gonna stay in that trade forever. I don't like to stay in the trades forever. For me, I either get the get the exact, so for me, and the entries are not debatable. The entries are not debatable. My entry price is the exact price. Sometimes in very rare occasions, I may give a couple of points to the stop if I see that the price is not taking off immediately and if it's having a hard time, I evaluate the cluster zones of support and see if I have any kind of confluence that will allow me to still stay in the trade and not get stopped out. And in which case, I may give a couple of points or a few points into a trade. But that's the only area on the chart that is a little bit debatable because we don't want to get dinged out of the trade. And we all the stops that we place are more of the emergency types of stops because we don't want to get identified by algos and we don't want, like I said, we don't want to get stopped out and then wait to see the price go into our direction. All right. We have 10 minutes into the London session close and we are just about to do this bull flag. See, th this is another trade right here. Okay. So like I said, this is not a short, but it was not a long. It was a sit on the hands. This is sit on the hands. When you're seeing this cluster develop here, it's just sit on the hands. Why? Because you have multiple levels of support. First off, you have the 40s, you have the 30s, then you have the 20s and then you have the 15. That's a strong cluster of support. This is the perfect example. Like if you want to stay in and say, hey, I'm going to stay in. I'm going to take it for a longer duration of time. You got to wait for a pullback. And in fact, if you, when you guys are going to review the recording, I mentioned in the m and &E SMP one thing this morning. We're going to take it a little bit to the uh, five minute here. Let's just zoom in because our trades were initiated based on five minute formations. And, and, here we go. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, sure, absolutely, Danny, yeah. Um, no, I'm going to post the recording on the, uh, on the feed on the Twitter feed. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Okay, what was I saying? <laughs> Lost my train of thought here. Okay, yeah, circling back to the m and &E SMP trade. We said that we were looking at this cluster right here. It was sitting on minor support. It was regaining the 10 EMA. It was trying to hold, and there were actually two indices that were holding really well, and that was the Dow and the m and &E SMP. My favorite was the Dow as we were watching it here, but I said it's kind of asymmetric, uh, asymmetric trade because uh, it has a target in, almost into the 600, almost into the 600. And take a look, it actually made it to 90 right here. And I really didn't like the fact that it was the first one to snap up every single time when you have one index that is showing a little bit of strength because of the components. We actually did the analysis on the components uh, and we were showing signs of strength into Boeing, UNH. I mentioned some dark cool prints. I mentioned some um uh some block trades into those stocks right that had a strong indication that the dow may be on the move uh however because of this snap up uh i was still watching nasdaq and the mini &E smp because they didn't snap immediately we also had a quick snap into russell so we had two indices that have been cooperating and have been not cooperating, but they have been uh, in sync. And we had two indices that were a little bit laggards. And those two at the time were the mini &E SMP and NASDAQ. I said that NASDAQ has a bit more um, resistance because it had this spot right here uh, from prior price action had also resistance from the 50s. So when we opened, we went up and then we stalled and we stalled, we, we were starting to bring red. So it's exactly price action, right? So the price action was not conducive of an immediate run to the upside, but look how perky YM was, okay? And then we were setting up this similar pattern into the m and &E SMP. We were setting up similar patterns in Russell and we were setting up not so similar patterns in NASDAQ because we had down and we had inside bar here. So once we had the inside bar, this is not a pullback buy, it was just a regain. And I would say a sloppy bull flag formation that would take the price over this high, over the edge of 50 to punch it higher. And 65 was the go ahead for a velocity all the way into the 400 but we were already into this trade. And again, I just want to make sure that, you know, I make myself clear. I am not aggressive into the end of the month, especially on the last day, the last day of the quarter where there's a lot of balancing happening. Okay. So there are historic things that are happening in the market that you need to keep track of and adjust your plan every single day, because every single day is different. And the, the decisions that you take are dictated, are not even correlated, are dictated, but what price action is telling you to do. Because if the chart is telling you to do this, okay, I cannot say, oh, I'm going to stay in the trade because, hey, my trading plan says that I need to stay in the trade. No, you have to you always have to adjust to your plan. And then as I mentioned, when we were in this trade, I said, okay, we're going to go for small targets. It's a more treacherous trade in the m and &E than any other index. And we're going to look for possible, you know, continuation, like I said, into this resistance, into the 50 and 55. There's a small chance that we may get a continuation into the 63. We trailed. And I said, at one point, I said, if you want to stay in the trade for a longer duration of time, you may see a pullback. And you have to live through the pullback. I didn't want to live through that pullback today. If it was any other day, then yes. Because the odds are that we were showing signs of topping a little bit into this spot. Remember the double top from the one hour. And then if we would have lost the 54 and a half spot, we would have probably pulled back into the 45 and possibly back into the 40s. I mentioned this. And I didn't want to do it. Usually when I see these moves that are happening, really aggressive moves to the upside, I like to keep one lot in open and on any sign of a pullback, I like to keep it in 
and stay in for the duration of the time. So what I mean by that, even if I see like red, red, red going against me. So let's say here, I see red, red, red. Let's say the 20 SMA is not holding. Let's say I see red, 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 whatever. So you live through this pullback, but that that's not, you know, that's trend trading and this can transform into a swing trade. Okay. We're here to make money on a day-to-day -day basis as an income style. Okay. In and out, in and out, in and out. And then, so let's say our entry was here, right? This is, this was our entry. It could go actually below your entry. You cannot choke it with a break even at this spot. And then you're waiting for a rotation. Once you have the rotation that is in progress, then you place your stop below this low and you let the price go higher, 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 whatever it wants to do. Okay. So this is the concept of that last slot that you want to, let's say, stay in. Okay. But this is only when you get a pullback. When you're getting what we got today, a range, these are very difficult to trade. Why? Because the hourly structure is into a double bottom, uh, into a double top, into a double top. Double top means resistance. Now remember, resistance is meant to be broken to the upside, but it's also a caution zone where profits can be taken. If the pullback is shallow, then there are not many profits that are being taken. If the pullback is sharper, then there are partial profits that are being taken more than you know stabilizing at the highs. Another indication here that the price is moving higher into like literally two minutes ahead of the London session close is that there's still accumulation into the London session. So the London session traders are not pulling back the price, right? Are not pulling back the price. They're fully engaged and they're keeping their positions active for the New York trading session. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Paul, uh, dark pool, uh, dark pools are alternative trading systems, uh, routes where institutional traders place their trades in the overnight or they don't make them public. Okay. Just not to destabilize the market. So at points, let's say Goldman Sachs, or Chase or um, JP Morgan, they can place trades in this alternative route. It's a separate route uh, where, they, uh, where they make these transactions and these transactions are usually very large, very large. And the reason why they use this route is because they do not wanna reveal their intentions. Yeah, Gary, this is recorded. So they do not wanna reveal their intentions whether to buy or to sell. So they're, when they're throwing these dark pool prints, let's say, uh, let's say uh, Apple, right? Let's say, I'm just giving an example. There's, I don't know, I didn't check to see if there was any dark pool activity in Apple. But anyway, so uh, if you're looking at Apple, okay, yeah. When you're looking at Apple, let's say it's trading at 116, hypothetically, I don't know, it's trading. Okay, it's trading at 115.84. Let's say that right now you're getting a dark pool print and if you're using Schwab, by the way, you get all these prints for free. If you have a Schwab platform, you get all these dark pool uh, prints for free. There's also, if you're a stock trader and using Lightspeed, you're also getting these dark pools for free. Okay, but that's a that's another work on its own. Okay, um, I like to look at the end of the day and browse a little bit. I don't, I'm not very focused, and here's the reason why. If there's a dark pool print, let's say an apple, right now it's trading at 115.90. And if there is a print that is above average, let's say a 1.5 million print or a 1 million print of shares. And if there is that big of a print that is coming uh, in, let's say at 116.20, okay? 
what they're doing is they're not revealing their intention to buy or to sell at that point you don't know their intention but you can look at the technical pattern and if there is a range or if there is a setup you could actually see their intentions if there's a weekly rotation or if there is any kind because they are going for higher time frames they're not so these are not day trading uh, these can be day trading materials in which case you would have to look at some different time frames but usually uh usually they're for swing trading they're for swing trading and definitely they help us in day trading because once we identify them we could definitely you know uh see that if it crosses above that uh that level and if that level is sustained let's say it's trading over 116 whatever that let's say dark uh dark pool print was and if the price is starting to accumulate and if you're seeing the volume increase into that area then that is accumulation and if you're seeing the price develop resistance into that area it means that they want to sell it's always great to have like a lot of information that but you know uh that would help you with your trading decision so it's you know technical analysis but if you're trading stocks and if you're you know swing trading this is something that you want to take a note of just you know just you know just a little thing that i like to look at i don't like to base my decisions um also another thing is to look for call flow this is something that you get on benzinga platform uh on benzinga pro and i I have subscription to all of these things and that's why I'm making the decisions that I make into our swing trades. I mean, you can see the results that we're having in our swing trades, in our day trading, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the reason uh, why I do a lot of pre-market work because I look for all of these elements, okay? Because there's a very, obviously there's a, a very strong correlation between, uh, between the market, obviously the indices and the underlying stocks, right? underlying stocks are moving the indices are moving so uh the more information you have the better uh decision you can make so of course you take into consideration everything that is out there and customizing it creating your blueprint for every single trade based on your entry your stops you know your targets etc that's why we we do all the pre-planning all right so uh i think i'm done for today um uh let's uh do a little wrap here wow i'm not taking this out <laughs> all right here it is finally regain my mouse okay okay so let's take a quick look and see what happened in the market ym reaching resistance very close to 800 spot uh and that is it, here's the thing guys I'm gonna show you okay um where's the four hour okay See the 200 SMA on the four hour? Okay. Hey, Lori. <laughs> also, I'm glad you, I, I'm glad this is helpful. Uh, Paul, hold on just one sec. I had to pop. I don't know how to get rid, and this is so annoying on the screen where I have my multiple time frames. Uh, I can't stop these pop-ups that are coming in. Like every time I'm getting an email, there's a pop-up that is coming in on that screen and it's so annoying. All right. So I don't know how to, I, I managed to take them off of my laptop, but I can't take them off. It's, apparently this desktop doesn't have the same settings or I don't know. It's just so annoying. Okay. Paul, if the London session didn't take profit about 1130 means uh, uh likely sell off by close of the new york trading session you don't know because if the momentum is strong they may get uh they may be sideways into the doldrum period uh and they may still continue higher listen this profit taking is not um doesn't have to happen doesn't have to happen okay obviously there are going to be partial profits but so far we, we are right on track on the weekly structure to continue much higher in fact uh nasdaq yes uh and ym right now not russell yet but they're on their path up to their prior all-time highs that's right to the prior all-time highs so large so investors right now are still looking for twelve thousand dollars twelve twelve thousand 
obviously $12,000 in NASDAQ, $12,000. And into the prior high of $12,490. That's the cone. That's the cone that they're, okay, let me show you on this one because we don't have, okay. Here's the structure. Oops, sorry, too much. Okay, here's the structure. This is the COVID and we're going higher or low, higher or low, higher or low. Wow, this, this is the most beautiful rotation that I've ever seen since COVID. Definitely the nicest. Look at the chop that we had here. We moved higher and then we had doji. We had inverse hammer. We had green candle. And finally, we finally moved above this uh, 50 SMA and we started to move a little bit higher here and take it. it. It was hard to trade into this area. It was hard to trade into this area. But now this is like an organized, we're finally seeing the market entering into some kind of organized. Uh, Jerry, if you're still in, yeah. If, you, if, if you're still in, uh, ju just take the, take the target, okay? Um, okay, so we, we have a really nice rotation, right? Really nice rotation. Look at it. This rotation shows that we may have a cone completion back into the one, 140, 160 with this high right here. 180. More, even more, 180. So all the way into the 180. And same with NASDAQ. NASDAQ has obviously the strongest pattern. Okay, strongest pattern. And don't forget tomorrow we have brand new monthly candles. This is gonna have a really high impact into our day trading. Okay, so uh, let's go here to the weekly, not monthly, but weekly. Okay, let's take these lines out. Okay, look at this. One, two, three, bam, rotation. Here it is, this week. This is what I'm talking about, 12,000 and back into the 12,465, cone completion, okay? So once these patterns enter, good job, Jerry. Once these patterns enter into higher time frame formations, you have to maintain the trend. That's why it's hard to short smaller time frames when they're entering into these massive rotations, into these massive patterns. Okay. Okay, let's uh, take it back to the one hour and yeah, but, but that's it. Okay, um, let's see here. All right, so that's why I wanted to show you that it reached the 200 SMA and you're gonna get a slowdown in the momentum right here, okay? How steep or how shallow this will be determined by patterns, okay? By patterns, and you have to take it one pattern at a time. Uh, around this time of the day, and like I said, from about 10.30 to about 2.15 or so, I don't even look at smaller time frames. I only look at, you know, five or 15 minute uh, 15 minute uh, charts because they're going to have the impact onto the market, not the smaller time frames. Okay. Um, volume is going down. So definitely you have to look at the volume and see how the volume is uh, trading at the time of the day and adjust your chart depending on the volume. Okay. Depending on the volume. Any other questions? Any other questions? I hope this was useful session. Uh, I know that um, I'm, a, I'm very cautious. I'm very, very cautious uh, as I'm going into, and especially, and here's the deal, you know, if you're in a trade, do you know how many people, how many traders would kill to have a, like a five point or a three point or a two point day? A lot of traders will kill for that because their, their win ratio is really low and the market has been choppy. And there are a lot of traders that are losing money in the market. We're printing money. We're printing money. Like literally everything that we're touching, it just turns into cash. At the end of the month, you're gonna see everything is all cash. 
And after you have, and this is a big topic. This is a big, big top topic. After you are up in a trade, and if you are up, I would say quite big in a trade, you don't want to give back your profit depending on the historic data of the day that you're trading, right? So on option expiration day, for instance, if I have, or on the last day of the month or the quarter, or um, on, let's say, um, quadruple witch or whatever, you know, or an FOMC day or you name it. If you're up in the morning on your first trade, I usually risk less than half. And I even mentioned it here in, um, in the room. When you review the recording, you're gonna hear me say that if you decide to take a second trade, these are some trade ideas that I'm not going to take because I made my money today. But if you want to take them, take them with half the risk or less, even a quarter. That's what I said. I don't like this. And, and here's the other side. If you lose on a trade, let's say you start the day, you have a losing trade, then your level of Focus should triple, quadruple, because you want to take yourself out of the hole, but not forcing a trade. You have to let the trade come to you and you have to read price action at every nanosecond of the time because you need to deploy either a trailing strategy or your plan can change. You can't be complacent and say, hey, I'm going to go, here's my entry, here's my stop, I'm going to go have a coffee. No, you have to watch price action. You have to take diligent directions and instructions every, at every single moment, depending on price action. Okay, so it seems right now that the price is still holding, so higher time frames are still holding the ranges into the highs. So for the afternoon trading session, and this is something that um, you can possibly expect for the afternoon trading session, NASDAQ is a little bit more stronger here, it's getting more strength. I don't doubt NASDAQ getting back into the 500 uh, area. It's not actually that far away from that spot, but it may run into that 500 area. Right now, we haven't punched over the 80 area, like I said, and we're still building this bull flag formation. Okay, this is a pull back by and a bull flag formation. The entry for the bull flag formation, the entry for the pullback would have been somewhere into the 60s with a stop below this 200 SMA uh, on the four hour. And the additional breakout can be over 80. If it breaks over 80, it's gonna go to 500. But the problem here is that you cannot choke the trade and the trade needs to have a stop right into this 10 EMA. And then again, you have a resistance spot into the 510s 10 area and your resistance and these resistance spots can be seen target areas and remember that during lunchtime the volume is lower so that means that there's not much participation into the afternoon trading session so that means that the likelihood of follow through may be slower or it may not happen at all or the likelihood of a range working in the afternoon trading session and that was my fear with the ranges that we had in ES and YM when I said that these are trade ideas for those of you that did not engage into trades was that I know for a fact and this is proven by patterns and by trading every day that ranges tend to shake out if they happen between Close to 11 o'clock, I would say close to more or less 15 minutes, less or more, you know, 15 minutes prior to 11 o'clock, 15 minutes after 11 o'clock. So they have the chance of shaking traders out. And that's why you need to uh, make sure that you adjust your plan. Shakeouts are imminent and shakeouts are very common around lunchtime until about 2.30 or so. All right, 
Lara, green is good. Today's green. Yeah, absolutely. Bit fat green today. Okay. So like I said, you know, we can still have the momentum is still higher. The volume has decreased. So volume is not that high. The one hour in NASDAQ just pinched above the prior hourly high. You just see it right here. It just pinched, went over that 80, went into the 84. And like I said, it does still have room for higher into that 500. Uh, Russell, which is actually still, still holding on right there. And this is, again, an idea. Okay. Russell is in a confusing spot right now. Let me just get the one hour. Okay. Here it is. It's a doji. So it's showing signs of topping. If this low is going to hold the 14, so if this 14 is going to hold, we may still see pressure to the upside. But if it breaks 14, it's going to go to 10. Don't short it, okay? Because see what happens if you short? You're, you're going definitely against the institutional money. And you want to go with the institutional money at the same time with the institutional money, not following the institutional money. So on a five minute structure, you can see it here. Okay, so it has support into the 14 spot. Okay, and it's sideways. In a sideways range, you don't read setups. You need to look for breakouts or breakdowns. Okay, and because this the context is of a bullish, you're gonna be looking for a breakout. So 1520. Okay, so you wanna look for a break over 1520 or so. You have this spot right here for the high. Let me check out the 15 minute if it's a little bit more evident. Yeah, you could take this like this. So let's say the stop is still into the 14 as an emergency stop. So you don't get dinged out by algos because guess what? Most of the traders are going to have to stop into the 16 or 17 or into this area right here. This is where they're going to have to stop. Okay. You don't want to be in a retail trader. You don't want to think retail right now. So you want to take it over uh, you want to take it over uh, 15, 20 point, let's say three. You're going to have a very small target into 21. That's it. 21. That's a resistance spot. You have to, as much as I want to say, man, I want to really have a target one into 25. You can't. That's your target one. This is where you have to scale out. Okay. So target one is in 21. And then you're going to be looking for a 20, uh, uh, 24 to 25, 23, 24, 25. You're going to be on your toes once you see the 23 number and you're going to trail tight, 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 tight as you're getting into this 26 because you're reaching resistance again. And this is resistance from the New York trading session. All right, does that make sense? Yeah, for exactly Noor. Exactly. Let's put it right here. Monthly candle. Tomorrow we're going to have brand new candles. In fact, starting with uh, tonight at 6 p.m. Okay. These are going to have a high impact for our trading. Always evaluate the price of trading in relation to the prior high, low, and support zones. No matter what support zones you're looking at. So all support zones that support or resistance zones that you're looking at. So we had a really nice really nice move down in sync with the trend. We never violated the 10 EMA. So we're still in power trend mode, even on the monthly chart. Uh, things are going to be very clear as we're moving forward into the next month. Like I said, we are trading the weekly structure very strong. Okay. The weekly structure is very strong. Tap into the 20 SMA rotating full completion cone 87, right? And the monthly chart is still green, is still red. 87, a pop over 87 will assure continuation higher. Okay, will assure continuation higher. Uh, now, remember that we're starting October. October is historically, that's why you have to keep track of historic data. Remember when I said everything that we talk in here in the trading room about historic data, about things that you can expect every single time in a cyclical manner, whether it is FOMC or 
quadruple witch or option expiration or whatever it is, whatever event it is, September, keep track of September. Maybe next year you want to take a month off in September, right? Travel, do whatever, probably, you know, we're not going to be quarantined or whatever, you know, things are going to be different. But uh, September is usually a very tough month to trade because it's the end of uh, earning season, right? Earning season really slows down. And it's a little bit choppier. There are some holidays in, uh, in September as well. Uh, volume is a bit lower in September. September is not one of those, the best months, okay? Not the best months. And you can see it here reflected into this red candle, okay? Into this red candle. So let's go back right here and let's identify another September, okay? Here's September. September was here sideways. You can see the sidewaysness. September is known as being a sideways, uh, a, a sideways month, right? So September right here last year in 2019, it just triggered ever so mildly, but it's an inside month. You can see inside month right here. It's not, it's not um, the fact that it's red, but it's an inside month. It has, it's the same as this, uh, at this month. This month just had a peakable high, but it's still, look at where the price is trading right now. 3368. It's still inside inside month, right? So let's take a look back. October. Okay, this uh, October. Here's here's September. Here's September. You see the slowdown in the momentum in September, right? It's a doji. <laughs> September is a doozy. I'm telling you, you have to adjust it. And the same thing goes for at the multiple reasons for September, and we have discussed them this month. Um, a lot. We discussed the role. We discussed the contract expiration, right? So these are big factors for September that you have to keep in mind. And that's why you have to be cautious. All right. It's September. So yeah, you have to be on your toes. You have to be on your toes every single day you come into the market and more so into September. And you have to readjust your plan. If it's not moving the, uh, you know, immediately for you, Okay, just, hey, adjust your plan. Move your stop to break even so you don't have a loss. Or if your plan says, hey, I'm going to be, you know, I'm just going to keep the original stop in because I'm really looking, looking for the bigger picture, that's fine. Okay, but I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to show you, here's, uh, here's actually uh, a September right here, and that is uh, that is in uh, 2000, uh, 2018, okay? This is the first time when we had volatility right here. This is the first time when we had volatility. This Look at this uh, uh, September right here. So September tends to be sideways inside month always, okay? In very rare occasions, oh, if you were trading 2008, uh, not eight, but 10, 11, 13, whatever, uh, those were quantitative easing years when the market was progressing slowly higher, but still September was slower. Okay, still it was a little bit slower. Okay, here's NASDAQ into the 500. All right, guys, this is all for today. I hope it was very useful. Um, we did have many lectures on different topics here. And um, I'll uh, shoot you guys the recording. It's going to be posted on our private feed on Twitter and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock. We're beginning a brand new month, very excited for October earning season. So fundamentals are going to take first place, narrative second place and economic release is second place. So I'm very excited for October. More about October and the characteristics of trading October in the upcoming day. So I hope you guys uh, had a good trading day, a solid trading day today. I'll see you tomorrow at nine o'clock. And uh, those of you that have enrolled in the Power Income Futures Trading course, I'll see you guys at 2 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna go ahead with part two of technical analysis. Okay, <laughs> see you soon guys, bye.